This video is called The Tricky Case, Mapping Photo Textures to Curved Surfaces. The premise of this video is that you might sometime, and you will probably, have some sort of a curved surface, just like I have this curved face here, that you map, need to map a photograph to. Um, the trouble is you can't use the texture tweaker the way you usually would in SketchUp to do that. It just doesn't work. You're going to have to take my word for it. Um, but there is a workaround. There's a way that you can do this, and it involves using projected textures, which we learned about in the last two videos, to basically project a texture through onto a curved surface. I'm going to show you how that works. I'm going to map a logo to this. Um, I actually just typed out the word corporate logo and made a JPEG out of it, and then I'm going to map that to this surface. You'll see how that works. Okay, what we need, first of all, is a flat surface that's exactly lined up with this curved surface. And what you could do is you could bring in the photo and try and line it up properly and stuff, but that's kind of a hassle. What I like to do is just make that surface myself. So I'm just going to use the line tool. I'm just using SketchUp's inference engine here that you can find all about in chapter 2 to draw a rectangle just like that that is exactly exactly the same size as this um, basically is this rectangle on the back of this shape. So I probably could have just taken that rectangle and copied it over, but basically I used the, um, the, the inferencing engine along with uh, the line tool to draw this rectangle that perfectly matches up with this face right here. Okay. Once I've got that, what I'm going to do is select that face, and then I'm going to go up to the File menu and go to Import. I'm going to import the JPEG that I want to bring in. In this case, it's just this JPEG that says Corporate Logo, just like that. All right, and this is what I'm going to make sure of. I'm going to make sure that right here in this dialog box, I use Use as Texture. I don't want to use Use as Image, and I don't want to use Use for Photo Match. It's got to be Use as Texture. Okay, let's select Use as Texture, and I'm going to say Import. And what it's going to do is it, it puts that photo just on the end of my cursor here. And what you're going to be tempted to do is just kind of try and stick this logo to, to here right now. But I can tell you it's not going to work. You can try it, but you're going to get a big headache. This is what you need to do. Map it to this flat surface right here. So watch, I'm just kind of stretching this out so it kind of fits on that surface, just like that. And you notice how it's kind of tiled, right? Uh, the, the image texture tile that I brought in wasn't big enough to cover this entire surface, so it kind of tiled on the surface. What I'm going to do is right-click on this and say Texture Position. It's going to give me these pins, and now once I've got that, I can actually just move this around on here until it's exactly the way I want it to look. It looks actually like, um, you notice how it, it's still a little bit too small. I'm either going to get the bottom of the P and the G in there, or the top of the C and the L. I can't really do this, so probably what I want to do is stretch this logo a little bit. And if you're paying attention to the videos at the beginning of this chapter um, about stretching um, textures, you'll see that we're in this all yellow pins mode. Uh, we want to be in another mode to, to actually stretch this texture a little bit. I'm going to turn on fixed pins. So I right click on that texture and say fixed pins. My pins turn all these different colors. And now what I can do is just kind of stretch out using this green guy and then kind of reposition. So still a little bit small. Let's kind of stretch that out just like this. Oops. Sort of like that. I don't really want to rotate it. I kind of want to put it there just so that I'm not getting very much of those other logos. It looks like that's not going to be possible, but it's not the end of the world. Once I like how that's positioned on this rectangle, remember this rectangle is kind of standing for this um, curvy surface over here. I'm going to right click and say done. And, you know, that's okay. I've ended up with some red stuff up here, but um, we can kind of do away with that right now. You know what we'll do, actually? I'm going to trick it by just taking the push-pull tool and pushing this down a little bit. Actually, let's not do that just yet. I'm going to do it afterwards, and you'll see what we're doing. Okay, so I've got this corporate logo thing here, and it wants to be back here. The first thing I need to do on this texture is right-click, choose Texture, and then choose Projected right here. You'll see right there in that menu it actually says Projected. It's not projected by default. You have to make sure to project it or else this isn't going to work. You choose projected, then just kind of double check to make sure it's projected. Hit texture. Yep, I've got this little check mark next to my projected thing, just like that. Oh no, everything kind of went away. Okay, I got it back. Uh, let's just double check that again. Texture, projected, very good. Okay, now that it's projected, what I'm going to do is take my paint bucket tool. And once I've got my paint bucket tool, it's going to open my, my material palette all by itself. I don't need that. I'm going to take this paint bucket tool, and I'm actually going to press Alt right here um, on the PC. I'm actually pressing uh, Command or Apple on the Mac, just like that. And I'm going to click on this to sample 
this texture, which is going to load it as my active texture here in my material dialog box. And then I'm going to click on that curved surface, just like that. And when I click on that curved surface, you see that logo is just mapped directly to that curved surface, just like that. Now that I've done that, I actually don't need this at all. So I'll just deselect this. Not deselect, but I'll actually just delete it. And if I want to get rid of this um, little red things that are kind of sticking up the top there, maybe I'll just be sneaky and use the push-pull and just kind of get rid of it, just like that. Okay? So that's the basic premise. All you have to do is remember that you have to have that texture be projected before you do it. And then you're going to sample it using the paint bucket tool. Um, and then just kind of sample it from the flat face and paint it onto the curved face, just like that. All right, that is the end of this video for Chapter 7 of Google SketchUp for Dummies.